Hi, we're here on the red carpet at the Sheen Center in New York City for the premiere of Hacksaw Ridge, the true life story of Seventh-day Adventist war hero Desmond Doss. In a few minutes, we're going to have the privilege of talking to director Mel Gibson and screenwriter Robert Schenken. Stay tuned. We are here with Robert Schenken, screenwriter for Hacksaw Ridge. And first of all, I'd like to ask you, what drew you to tell Desmond's story, to write Hacksaw Ridge? Well, it's, it's such a, uh, an astounding journey uh, of one man trying to reconcile his, his faith, his spiritual life, with his patriotism, with his civic duties mm -hmm. and responsibilities. And um, it's, it's, a man, it's a story of a man of principle who refuses to compromise his principles and uh, makes an extraordinary act of self-sacrifice and heroism. I think that's a really important story to be telling today. Um, so often, violence, uh, which is a staple of American cinema, um, is honored. Um, in, typically, in the first act, the man of principle refuses right. to engage. In the second act, his family has been ravaged. And in the third act, he picks up the gun and delivers a kind of justice and becomes a man. Desmond never picks up the gun. And I think that's a really important idea to honor today. We're with Mel Gibson, director of Hacksaw Ridge. Mel, what attracted you to this story, to tell this story? Well, it's just a great, compelling story about a, a man whose courage and convictions and faith, you know, allowed him to do stuff uh, beyond his own power. And I thought that that was uh, 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 really compelling and inspiring. So I think everyone should share that story. There are so many elements in his story, you know, the love story at the beginning. Um, how did you decide what you picked? picked and choose to put into the screenplay because many parts of his life are uh, larger than life yeah. and, and maybe hard to believe. So how did you decide what you put into the screenplay? Yeah, it's a great question. Well, you know, I, I'm certainly I'm, I have certain limitations. You know, I have two hours to tell my story <laughs> right. and I can't tell everything. So in, of necessity, I'm forced to to eliminate. But I'm also, I, I want to focus, you know, I have a certain thematic concerns that are important to me and that I want to bring to the service. And that becomes my lodestar for determining well, what's important here and, and what isn't important. What was, what was definitely important to me and for our audience was to understand Desmond Doss in terms of where he sprang from which is to say his family, mm -hmm. his church, and his community. I thought it was really important to start there so that we understood this individual. And, and that would, so then the jump into the violence that made escarpment uh, would be as shocking as it would be. So you're telling the story of World War II vets, Desmond Doss, an icon in the Seventh-day Adventist Church and Medal of Honor winners. Did you feel a certain weight or responsibility as you worked absolutely. on this? Yeah, no, absolutely. I know Desmond didn't want this story told. People tried to, um, you know, get the story out of him back in 1948. And then, they, mm -hmm. you know, Hal Wallace and Audie Murphy, they sent him to twist his arm and he wouldn't let go of it. He just wanted to stay in his tool shed, grow vegetables and pray, you know. Right. And it was a very humble guy. Yeah. He wasn't looking to stand on a soapbox and skite about his achievements. Right. He didn't credit himself with those achievements. He credited them to his higher power, to his God. You know, he's like, uh, was... Uh, um, I agree, too. I mean, how could, how could you do that? How could, how, how could you... Physically, how could you do what he did? Right. That's a lot of people that get off a top of a ridge in like eight, ten hours, something. I mean, it's crazy. What did this mean to you personally? What did you draw from this experience personally? Well, you can't live this long with the story of Desmond Doss and, and not be inspired at some level to want to be a better man, to re-examine your own principles, and to think carefully to what degree you live them and would be willing to live them. And um, that's, an, that's an open question and an ongoing journey. As a person of faith, Mel, what did you walk away with from this film, the experience of going through this? Well. <laughs> well, I look at, well, look, when I say inspiration, I look at a character like that. I'm inspired by that character. Now, it shined a light on how probably, you know, how, how my faith is probably nothing like that. I, I, I don't know if I have that strong a faith to just go into enemy fire 
for mm -hmm. a brother. I mean, could you do that? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... that's very and, and to do it again and again and again and again and again. And again, yeah. Right? Absolutely. Greater love hath no man. Yeah. Could I ask you if I could just take a couple seconds sure. and send a quick message to 20 million Seventh-day Adventists who are, 20 excited, million? who are excited worldwide, who are excited about are this they film. Are in the same place? No, they're not. <laughs> thankfully, thankfully not. But they're very excited about the film. If you could just give them a quick message. Hey, hello there. Hey, I hope you're going to see Hacksaw Ridge. It's one of yours. Cheers. And what would you say, how relevant is Desmond's story today? Uh, because I know there's a part in the movie where he says, you know, in a time when you know, things are so terrible and bad, you know, is it so bad to try to do a little bit, little, put a little good back into it? How relevant is it today? Oh, I, I couldn't be more relevant. Couldn't be more relevant. I mean, here we are in a world that, that still, sadly, is uh, riven with uh, conflict, and, and oftentimes, tragically, that conflict is motivated by religious differences. Here's a man who goes to war out of patriotism, but an intense religious belief, which he is unwilling to compromise. Uh, that's important. Desmond models a very different kind of masculinity uh, than what we're used to hearing in this country. And I think that's really important. So for all those reasons, I think it couldn't be more pertinent than it is right now. And one last question. Um, how much did you uh, rely on resources like Terry Benedict's documentary, The Conscientious Objector, or The Unlikeliest Hero, the book? Um, well, Terry's documentary was the founding document. Uh, and his work with Desmond, the interviews and the tape recordings of those interviews, were really the heart of what I had to work with. So uh, I had been badly crippled without it. So I'm very grateful for the work he did. It was, it was inspiring and, and utterly essential. Well, thank you so much thank for, you. and on behalf of Seventh-day Adventist Church, thank you for honoring the veterans and Desmond in his story. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that.